All right, what's up guys? New video today. We are doing an extensive zombie world combo video. This is going to be actually quite a long video. I have a ton of combos. Some are actually fan suggestions. Uh, these are going to be, some of them are Master Duel compatible. Some of them are not Master Duel compatible. Somebody can create some sort of chart in the, in the comment section or timestamps in the comment section. That would be great. That would be very helpful to the other viewers. Uh, but yes, we're going to go through a lot of different combos, different things that you can do with the deck. There are more cards in this in this showcase that i'm going to show you then can fit in a standard extra deck or in a standard deck because i want to show you all of the just the different things that you can do with zombies also i'm going to show you a ton of different budget options like for example here i know some of you tell me every single time you can't afford baron de fleur i've got a bunch of different level 10s that you can summon uh, zombie and non-zombie monsters that way you know there's a baron de fleur that you can summon or you can summon a three dollar alternative so i'm going to have all types of budget alternatives things like that in this video so they're going to be more cards than can possibly fit in an extra deck because i have to show you all of the different uh, budget alternatives and the things that the deck can do also if you are not subscribed obviously subscribe who else is going to update your zombie deck when Konami hits it on the ban list or when there's new support that's dropped? It's let's be honest. I'm I'm I'm, I'm there. Uh, make it happen. Subscribe, like the video, but let's not waste too much time. Let's get started. First combo requires just Sherry Nui Solitaire. Sherry Nui Solitaire is a one card uh, Scythe Lock plus Baron De Fleur or any Synchro 10. Uh, all you, like I said, all you need is a Sherry Nui Solitaire and any card to discard. This can be anything. Now, bear in mind. With zombies, you do want to discard things. So if this is a Mizuki, this combo is better. If this is a Necromancy, this combo is better. This is literally any card, Shang-Chi, any of the newer cards, the new Plague Spreader zombie, a Mad Mauler, regular Plague Spreader. If this card is any other card that is mildly useful, this combo becomes that much better. But let's just assume that this is a card that you just, just cross out, designate or call by the grave, something like that, hand trap. Uh, but all you need is a Sherry Nui Solitaire and a discard. So we're going to normal summon the Sherry Nui Solitaire. We're going to normal summon the Sherry Nui Solitaire. We're going to activate the effect of Sherry Nui Solitaire. We're going to send it to the graveyard. Uh, this card obviously has a level of fragileness to it. That's why you can play things like cross out, call by, uh, you know, your own counter hand trap, stuff like that to make this a little better. Uh, so we're going to use that effect to summon Unizombie. We are then going to activate the effect of Unizombie to send a zombie to the graveyard. Which we are going to send the Mizuki to the graveyard. And activate the effect of Mizuki to summon back Sherry Nui Solitaire. And these are both tuners. We can go into the Crystron Hakla Fibrax. Uh, once this loads. Use these two to go into the Crystron. Activate the effect of Crystron. In order to special summon the Jet Synchron. This card just came off the ban list. The previous ban list helps our deck a ton. Just because it's... It's a very strong card. It can help you discard, which is really awesome. Uh, you can even kind of like almost one card combo with this because you just normal summon, link it away, and then you can discard whatever you want out of the graveyard. Uh, yeah, like I said, this deck benefits a lot from discarding. Uh, we're going to link away the Jet Synchron. We're going to activate the effect of Jet Synchron in the graveyard, discarding whatever random card we have to bring it back. And then we are going to use these two to go into a copy of Dagda. And this is our end board. It really doesn't look that great, but I'm going to show you. It actually is very, very impactful. I'm going to go to our end phase. We're going to wait for our opponent to do anything in main phase one because Crystron needs to activate in main phase one. So we're going to activate that Crystron. And then we're going to chain Dagda to the activation of Crystron to set a Scythe. And now we are going to summon TG Wonder Magician from our extra deck using the effect of Crystron. So we're going to summon that. This has a mandatory effect to destroy a spawn trap card on Synchro Summon because any monster summoned off of Crystron, it counts as a Synchro Summon monster. So now we're going to pop our Scythe. Scythe is going to activate to Special Summon itself back. Uh, Scythe will activate its effect to stop our opponent from summoning from the extra deck for the rest of the turn. If our opponent has a copy of Forbidden Chalice, for example, or a copy of forbidden droplets and they don't discard a monster you can chain the effect of tg wonder magician in order or if they have imperm too like let's say they didn't have this here if they had an imperm you can chain the effect of tg wonder magician to summon a level 10 monster because we've got a level 5 and a level 5 this is a tuner so these are the different options that you could do you could summon baron to flirt this card is obviously a negate which is useful and it pops a card uh, you can summon sword soul supreme sovereign 
uh, Chang Ying. This card is actually really underrated in the deck because it gains attack and defense for every banished cards and your opponent's monsters lose attack for every banished cards. And the new zombie support does a lot of banishing. So right off the bat, we've got three banished right here. But in general, there's a lot of cards that get banished uh, through the new zombie support. Like uh, with the um, with the Shang-Chi card, for example. And then if this card would be destroyed by battle of card effect, you can banish a card instead. Any card in your graveyard. And if you banish Shang-Chi during your opponent's turn, that can benefit you furthermore. Uh, so that's very useful. And then if a card is banished, you can banish a card from your opponent's field and graveyard. So again really really good against like banishing effects very good with doom king baller drock because you can just activate the effect of doom king baller drock to banish a card your opponent controls and then chain this and then banish two more cards your opponent controls so it's actually a pretty good combo with doom king baller drock definitely don't sleep on this card it's it is a budget alternative to baron de fleur but in a lot and i'm seriously mean this in a lot of situations it's actually better than baron de fleur because it will act it will give you significantly more interruptions and grind game this just gives you one negate and one destruction during your turn this lets you banish two cards every single turn and it protects uh it protects itself which is really cool and it can help you combo off the other stuff your other option is white or a bahamut uh, this card basically will ensure that you will otk the following turn because it'll summon a to token that is 3300 attack uh, onto the field so it is itself 3300 attack and then it'll summon a token that's 3300 attack and what you have on your board is 1500 plus 3300 plus 3300 which is what is that 66 plus 15 is that game? Yeah, I think it's 81. Uh, so that's pretty much game. Yeah, 66. Yep, 81. Uh, but yeah, basically it'll ensure that you OTK the following turn. Any of these are decent budget options uh, to Baron de Fleur. Most of the time Baron de Fleur in this particular situation is going to be the best. So we're going to summon Baron de Fleur. Uh, so in that turn, what we basically were able to do with just one single copy of the Sherry Nui Solitaire is we set up a Baron de Fleur, which is an Omni Negate, and we locked our opponent out of our extra deck, uh, which that is a pretty, pretty cool thing that you can do there. So that is combo number one, one card, Baron de Fleur plus Scythe Lock. I'm going to show you how to make this combo significantly better just by having a different card in hand outside of the, uh, just outside of a regular card, if you actually have a card that helps you combo off. All right, so this is the exact same combo, but you just need access to zombie world. This combo becomes significantly just more disgusting if you have access to zombie world because obviously it turns everything into zombies. And on top of that, it allows you to do something very, very cool. So we're going to normal summon Sherinui Solitaire. We're going to activate the effect of Solitaire to tribute itself to summon Unizombie. Uh, this first part is going to look very similar to the last part. We're going to activate that, send a zombie, uh, increase its own level in order to send Mizuki. And then we're going to activate the effect of Mizuki to summon back Solitaire. And then we're going to link these two away into a Crystron. And then we're going to activate the effect of Crystron to summon out the... This card just totally disappeared on us. Jet Synchron. We're going to summon the Jet Synchron. And then we're going to link away the Jet Synchron to summon Link Karibo. Activate Jet Synchron in order to discard a card in a hand, which in this case is the Necro Banshee. If you have another card and then a Zombie World, you can still do this. Uh, as long as you have... Ne Necro Banshee is just really, really good to do this combo. It's basically a two-card combo. You can actually chain the effect of Necro Banshee to put out the Zombie World and then summon out the Jet Synchron. Next, we're going to link those two away into the Dagda. And right here, we can just pass our turn just, just like this. We can just pass our turn... Uh, I'll show you the cool things that you can do during our opponent's turn. They're going to do anything. You're going to activate the effect of Christron and you're going to chain the effect of Dagda. This looks very similar, similar to last time, but it's going to get slightly better. We're going to summon TG Wonder Magician, activate TG Wonder Magician, mandatory to pop the Scythe. You have to be careful with TG Wonder Magician because if you don't have back row, it, you will pop your own zombie world. That effect is mandatory. So we're going to summon the Scythe. Our opponent is now locked out of the extra deck for the rest of the turn. We are then going to activate TG Wonder Magician. Now our options are a little more vast because uh, we have Zombie World on the field. So these two, despite not naturally being zombies, are now zombies. So just to show you what we have, I've already showed you these three. You also now have access to Shirinui Sun Saga. This card basically gives you the ability on summon to shuffle back any amount of zombie synchros or zombie 
yeah, zombie synchros out of your graveyard back into your extra deck, and then you can destroy cards your opponent controls non-targeting. Uh, so that effect is is pretty darn good, just because uh, you've got the TG1 Magician, becomes a zombie in the graveyard, you can shuffle it back, and then pop cards your opponent controls. Pretty useful. On top of that, you can... Uh, he has a protection effect where if zombies you control would be destroyed, you can just banish the Sherry Nui monster in the graveyard, which we have the Sherry Nui solitaire in the graveyard. It's a pretty useful card. The other card that you can use is the Red Eyes Zombie Zombie Dragon Lord. This is a new card. Uh, this card is actually really, really cool. It actually can set up an infinite scythe lock uh, against your opponent. So we're going to do that right now. We are going to synchro summon. This adds up to a level 10. We're going to summon this thing. So it'll set up basically an infinite scythe lock. In addition to an infinite scythe lock, it will give you free link material every turn, but during your opponent's turn. So our opponent's going to end their turn. We've already scythe locked them, but we're going to activate the effect of Dragon Lord in order to summon back scythe. And this will basically provide us with free link material every turn. We're back in our turn. We can now, for example, summon Vampire Sucker. And let's just say we enter the battle phase, uh, attack our opponent end our turn here during our opponent's turn we wait till their opponent turn uh they do anything during their main phase we activate the effect of red eye zombie lord we can summon back the artifact scythe because in the graveyard it counts as a zombie when artifact scythe is summoned it has a mandatory effect uh to basically stun our opponent from using their extra deck for the rest of the turn we're going to activate that and then vampire sucker has a mandatory effect that allows us to draw Every single turn for the rest of the duel, we can do this as long as they can't address this scythe. Uh, so it usually lasts for about two turns and you're probably OTK your opponent. But basically, we have an endless scythe lock off of just just a zombie world and a Sharanui solitaire, which is kind of crazy. Here, we could just keep doing it again. I'll show you again. Uh, we could just link away the vampire sucker and this artifact scythe. End our turn. Our opponent will now go during their turn. They will attempt to do something. We can just summon the red eye, use the effect of red eyes, zombie dragon lord to bring back the scythe. Scythe has a mandatory effect to lock them out of their extra deck. We go back to our turn. They are basically locked out of their extra deck for the rest of the duel. Every single turn, you can just keep bringing back scythe. It'll keep activating and locking your opponent out of, your, out of their extra deck. Uh, this is very good against virtually every single deck in the metagame with the exception of Flunderies. It is just real. It really is just that strong, and it is a um, it is a quick effect too, which is really cool. Uh, so you can chain it to your opponent's stuff, so you can stop them from summoning in a lot of different weird ways. It's really, 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 really strong against the current meta. It's good against Despia. It's good against, like I said, every single deck except Flundery is very good against Sword Soul. But that is combo number two, Endless Scythe Lock, just off of two cards, mostly just the Sherry Nui Solitaire and Access to Zombie Roll. It's all you need, Endless Scythe Lock. Let's get it to the next combo. All right, guys, this is combo number, I guess, three. Uh, this is like our bread and butter start. This is like a pretty standard opening hand. You've got the ne Necro World Banshee, which this card can be, ne obviously this card, or it can just be a copy of... Foolish Burial, it could just be a copy of the actual Field Spell Zombie World. You, you play a lot of copies of what this card represents, which is, this is essentially just the Zombie World. And then you play uh, Unizombie, which can be Sherinui, uh, Sherinui Solitaire, or the Unizombie. So you've got six copies of this. You've got, depending on your build, like six plus copies of the Banshee, because obviously Foolish Burial, stuff like that. But this is a pretty common opening to have. Uh, what you're basically going to do is you're going to summon the Unizombie. This will, this is what our standard build used to do, but it will give you significantly more recursion options. So we're going to activate the effect of Unizombie. We're going to increase its own level. We're going to send a copy of Mizuki to the graveyard. Uh, then we're going to activate the effect of the Unizombie again. The other effect, which is to send a monster from our is send a card from our hand to the graveyard to increase its own level. We're going to send the Banshee. Uh, we are then going to activate the effect of Mizuki, not the Banshee. Make sure it's not the Banshee. Uh, to special summon the Banshee back to the field. And we're going to summon it. It doesn't really matter what zone you summon it, but we're going to summon that effect. We're going to use that effect. Uh, Banshee's really cool. It has a quick it, this effect to banish itself. is actually a quick effect, so even if your opponent tries to like call by, you can just banish it for cost. 
Uh, we are then going to use the Necro Banshee and the Unizombie to link away into the Crystron. Activate the Crystron on summon. We can, at this point, chain the Banshee because we don't really need it right now. So we're going to activate the effect of Banshee in order to summon a Tuner from our deck. Which, in this case, we are going to summon the Glow Up Bloom. Uh, we are then going to Special Summon use the glow, using the Glow Up Bloom. We are going to link that away in order to special summon using the glow up bloom. And in this particular case, we have a lot of different options. Again, Shang-Chi, uh, we have Jacko Bulon, Doom King, Hela. We have a ton of different things that we can summon. Uh, I'm going to show you the Shang-Chi line. So we're going to summon the Shang-Chi. We're going to special summon it. And then we can activate that effect which in itself this card has another foolish burial effect so it'll let us send another zombie again the options are really really like wide and vast in terms of what you can send uh, you can send a glow bloom if you already have it plague spreader a mad mauler you can send uh, what else uh, you can send a mizuki to the graveyard keep extending and get some of the cards from your graveyard back you can make a synchro 10 right now if you really wanted to a zombie synchro 10 we are locked into zombies another world banshee jacko bulan is another interruption during your opponent's turn obviously doom king and hella you have a ton of different options uh, we're going to send the mad mauler we are then going to activate the effect of mad mauler to summon itself back while reducing the level of shang chi by two so shang chi is now four this is now two and we have enough to make a level six so we're going to summon the immortal dragon using these two immortal dragon has an effect again to foolish burial a zombie during the main phase so we're going to activate the effect again same options i just mentioned that like ton of different options that you can do uh, it's actually kind of insane like the amount of different options that you can do this play can go in so many different like synchro routes depending on the state of the game right now i'm just showing you what you would do if you're going first and and you want to set up a, a decently formidable board this is what i'm going to show you how to do but again your options really are limitless like if you're going second it's better to just go into one of the larger zombie synchros so I, right now i would probably send mizuki uh, summon back the shang chi and then i would just synchro summon or something like I, I would do something where i'd synchro summon i would take a totally different route than i'm taking right now but being that that is not the case i'm just going to send the doom king baller track to the graveyard uh, then we are going to link away we are going to use the immortal dragon and the link rebo we're going to link those two away to summon the Zom vampire sucker which will allow us to combo off even more if you got hand trapped at any given time in this particular like combo you can just summon one of your opponent's hand traps right now and then draw an additional card if you wanted to with vampire sucker uh, what's cool about this combo is that it leaves us with a bunch of recursion for the following turn so we have link rebo and graveyard that can bring back if you have a level one that's half decent uh, we have a mortal dragon if a zombie monster we control is destroyed by battle we can summon this king back for free all the monsters on our field are zombies so obviously that's pretty good even our opponent like hand traps us or like uses forbidden droplets or something to stop our combo if they destroy something we get this thing back for free uh, on top of that we have doom king coming back in the standby phase when this thing is banished the shang chi we can banish another zombie to special summon itself back and we have mad mauler which can summon uh, as long as you control a level six or higher zombie you can summon this back from your graveyard once per turn so you've got five recursive effects whereas like a few months ago before all the new support came out the only thing we'd have in the graveyard right now is a doom king baller drug and that's it but now we have five different recursive effects that will really, really increase the ceiling of the grind game uh, in this particular in this particular deck, which is really cool. So now we're just going to go to the end phase. Again, this seems the thing with zombie boards, they always seem unassuming. But as you'll see, quite a few things happen. We're going to end our turn. Our opponent's going to, well, during our standby phase, during their standby phase, we're going to activate Doom King to special summon itself back. Since a zombie monster special summon from the graveyard, Vampire Sucker, sucker will allow us to draw a card if we want we can chain doom king to banish something or negate that but don't negate your own effect so we're going to draw a card our opponent's going to do anything in main phase one we are going to immediately chain Christron in order to special summon a synchro monster from our extra deck we are going to usually go into formula synchron although if they have like a spawn trap card you don't want to deal with like a floodgate uh you can go ahead with the tg wonder magician but generally speaking from formula synchron is pretty good so we're going to use the formula synchron formula synchron will allow us to draw another card which is pretty cool and again we can if we wanted to activate the effect to banish our opponent's monster which is 
pretty useful there. Uh, but there's a few different things that you can do. When that formula synchron is activated uh, to draw a card, we're going to chain the effect of Doom King to banish a monster from either player's field or graveyards. So we're going to activate that effect. So we're going to banish one monster. We can banish our own Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi was banished. We draw a card off the formula synchron. We're going to activate the effect of Shang-Chi in order to special to banish a zombie from the graveyard. And when we banish a zombie from the graveyard, we can special summon itself back to the field, which is a pretty cool effect. In this particular case, I usually would banish the Link Karibo, but Link Karibo actually does have a recursive effect. You, you generally want to keep zombie Unizombie in the graveyard, just in case you send a Mizuki. You can send a Mizuki to special summon the Unizombie back, and then Unizombie obviously lets you send and discard from hand. So you generally want to keep at least one Unizombie in the graveyard, so I will generally banish the Link Karibo. So we banish the Link Karibo right there. And now we have a ton of different options. Formula Synchron has a quick effect that will allow us to Synchro Summon during our opponent's turn. And I'm going to show you the options that you have here. So we're going to activate that effect. We have this, which is a level 6, and this, which is a level 8. This still has one more negate left on it, so generally want to keep it on the board. But if you've already used that negate, then this is the time to do this. These are all of the different options that we have available to us. We have Sharinui Sun Saga which will shuffle back monsters on the field zombie monsters in the graveyard or in the banish zone and then destroy cards our opponent controls non-targeting we have immortal dragon and we have formula synchron which means that two cards will be destroyed on our opponent's side of the field we have shang shang shing which will basically give us a ton of different things with ton of different effects when cards are banished baron de fleur we have the red eyes zombie lord and then of course we've got level eights because these are the options we have from the level eights we have borlode savage dragon which is an omni negate similar to baron de fleur we are only going to be able to get one negate out of it because we only have link Karibo. i'm sorry i banished the link Karibo. if we still had link Karibo, uh we would be able to use baron de fleur uh the the borlode savage dragon for example we could use that but since I banished Link Rebo, we can't. But generally, you get one negate. It's kind of like a Baron de Fleur, but you only have to make it with a level 8. And we get a negate there. And then we've got the Skeletal Dragon Felgrand, which on summon will banish a, car, a monster our opponent controls, which is fairly useful. And then if a monster is special summoned um, from either player's graveyard, we can target a monster on the field and negate its effect. So we have a lot of different options here to summon. None of these are really bad options. What's great is that... Each of these cards is individually situational, and that's great because we are literally doing this during our opponent's turn. So no matter what our what our opponent's deck is playing, what their board state is like, we can basically have an answer to everything. If you're playing against Flunderies, you have an answer. If you're playing against Despia, you have an answer. No matter what, you have an answer uh, to every one of their situations. Um, in this particular case, because I banished the Link Karibo, uh, and I shouldn't have, I'm just going to go into the Skeletal Dragon Felgrand using the Shang-Chi and the Formula Synchron. Summon it. Shang-Chi will be shuffled into the deck. We're going to activate the effect of Skeletal Dragon Felgrand to banish a monster our opponent controls. And then, of course, we can actually chain the Doom King to negate our own effect, but we won't. Uh, but that is basically combo number one. A ton of different things that we did there. A ton of graveyard recursion set up for next turn which is really cool this is for example next turn we have Ma mad mauler available to us it doesn't matter what we drop in terms of level we can summon mad mauler and then we can draw an additional card off of the effect of vampire sucker we basically have like plays ready to go for the remainder of the turn it's actually really really cool uh, but that is everything for this particular combo there are obviously different variants that you can do you can also set up scythe lock with that opening hand uh, but this is all of the new stuff that you can do with that card but let me show you another combo following up and the different things that you can do all right so now we have another combo here uh, this we're going to do almost the exact same board as we did a second ago but this time we have a totally alternative way to make this board because it's important to have different ways to say, make the same board. You can't just rely on Unizombie and Sharanui Solitaire every single time because sometimes when you don't open them, your hands can be a little rough. So you have other ways to do that exact same board. In this particular case, we have Ready Fusion. This can be Ready Fusion or Instant Fusion because they do essentially the same thing. Instant Fusion is limited to one Ready Fusion is at three. So I pick this card up if you can. And then we've got, of course, the Mizuki, which is usually a three of in the deck because it's just so good. And this is your grind game this is a card this is your starter card this card is very important to the deck especially if we're playing a very monster heavy version of the deck so we're going to normal summon the mizuki activate the effect of ready fusion to summon the uh, alveon alvain to our side of the field we are then going to synchro summon which is really cool 
uh, because zombies have sort of faded from a z synchro summoning deck and now I'm glad that we can start doing that again. We're going to activate the effect of Immortal Dragon to foolish any zombie monster we want to the graveyard. Uh, this differs depending on your hand, obviously. If you already have access to Zombie World, don't send Necrobanshee. You're going to send something like a Kozuki. You're going to send a Mizuki maybe to the graveyard. You can send... Uh, yeah, you can send a Mizuki, Gozuki, Hela. You can send Doom King Baller Drug. There's a lot of different options that you can do if you already have Zombie World. But since we don't, we're going to send Zombie World. We are then going to activate the effect of Mizuki in the graveyard to summon back the Banshee. Summon back the Banshee. We are then going to link these two away. If you didn't already know, Immortal Dragon is a tuner. So we can actually synchro. We can actually go into the. Christian Hecla Fibrex with it. We are going to use the effect on summon, summon a tuner, and then we are going to chain the Nether Solo Necro Banshee to activate Zombie World. Uh, we are just going to go again. It depends. Your options aren't limited. Depending on your hand, this obviously shifts. In a lot of cases, I summon the Jet Synchron because I already have access to Glow Bloom. Mad Mauler is also a very good option here. But since we don't have access to this yet, we are going to summon the Glow Bloom. We are then going to link away the Glow Bloom. For Link Rebo, we're going to activate the effect of Glow Bloom to summon a level 6 or higher zombie monster from our deck. Again, tons of different options. Going directly into Doom King. If you already use Shang-Chi, you don't need to if you already have it in the graveyard. Jacko Bulan is a decent option because it's a graveyard interruption during your opponent's turns. Very good against certain decks. Uh, again, this all depends on what deck you're playing against. You have to read your opponent. You have to be smart about this. Hell is really, really good because she can keep swapping out. Uh, she's extremely good in the grind game, so a lot of different options there. This particular case, we're just going to go with the Shang-Chi. We're going to special summon it, of course. We're going to activate the effect. Uh, we are not going to send Mad Mauler this time to the graveyard. We are just going to directly just send the Doom King Baller Drock to the graveyard, and then we are going to link these two away into a Vampire Sucker. So... Yep, the Shang-Chi and the Link Rebo directly into the Vampire Sucker. And we're just going to pass our turn here. Uh, this, again, does not seem like an assuming board. Standby phase, we get our Doom King back. And then, obviously, Vampire Sucker will activate automatically to draw us a card. Uh, we can chain the effect of Doom King if we wanted to, but we're going to be able to draw. Our opponent's going to be able to attempt to do something. We're going to activate Main Phase 1, Kristron Hacklefibrax, uh, Banish itself in order to... We don't... Yeah, we, when it banishes itself, we can actually chain the effect of the Doom King. Uh, which I'm not going to do just quite yet to summon the Formula Synchron. Formula Synchron will activate on summon to draw a card. And we are going to chain to that effect with the effect of Doom King Baller Drock to banish a monster. Again, you can banish your opponent's Mystical Shine Ball if you wanted to. And then just Synchro Summon into a Baron de Fleur that's good enough. Or you can banish the Shang-Chi. And then you can activate the effect of Shang-Chi since it was banished to banish another monster, which in this case we will banish the Alveon in order to basically summon itself back. We're going to summon it back. And now we have, again, with the effect of Formula Synchron, a variety of options. We can summon a Borlode Savage Dragon, Skeletal Dragon Felgrand. Uh, we still have, again, another negate on the Doom King Baller Drock, but we can make Zem Zombie Dragon, Baron de Fleur, Shaoshang, and the Sharanui Sun Saga. Earlier in the video, I reviewed exactly what you can do with these. In this case, we could just summon the Borlode Savage Dragon right there, activate its effect. We don't want to negate it, and then we can attach the Link Rebo. So it's almost like a Baron de Fleur. We still have an Omni Negate. We only have one Omni Negate because this is obviously only a Link 1, but it, that doesn't really matter because, again, Baron de Fleur is only a single negate anyway uh, but off that board we got to draw two cards we got an omni negate we've got the doom king baller drock and we're drawing every single time we summon from the graveyard with the vampire sucker which is obviously very useful and we've got zombie world all of this off of two cards that aren't even our main combo starters just kind of like two random extenders that we play in our deck that can help us get onto a board that is actually quite formidable obviously with a larger hand you can do a ton more uh, but this is yet another combo that you can do next i will show you a new combo that a youtuber a viewer of ours um, actually suggested all right so we've got another combo here this particular combo is actually given to us by a viewer named mr zombino uh, his comment actually showed this thing that you can do here uh, this of course is very in line with sort of like the budget build of the deck you can use stuff like Z uh, zombie reborn this is a very good extender in the deck you can banish a zombie then summon a zombie with the same name from your deck you can trigger the effects of shang chi for example with this effect 
in addition to the uh, level 8 monster, the new level 8 monster also. But all you need for this combo is just these two. And this combo actually plays around Nibiru, which is kind of cool. So we're going to normal summon the Sherinui Solitaire. Activate Sherinui Solitaire to summon the Unizombie. We're going to activate the Unizombie to send a zombie monster from our deck and increase the Unizombie's level by 1. Uh, so now we're going to send the Shang-Chi. We are then going to activate the effect of Zombie Reborn, targeting the Shang-Chi in the graveyard, and then banishing a Shang-Chi from our deck. Since, and so we're going to special summon that back, and since Shang-Chi was banished, we can activate its effect to banish the Sharanui Solitaire to summon the Shang-Chi back to our side of the field. Uh, this is summon number four that we've done so far. The next summon will be summon number five, which is going to be the Baron de Fleur. Baron de Fleur will now summon. This is again summon number five. If your opponent did have a Nibiru, it's worthless to even activate it at this point because it will just be negated. Uh, we are then going to activate the effect of Shang-Chi to send a zombie monster to the graveyard. In this particular case, we're going to send the Mizuki. Mizuki will then activate itself to special summon the Shang-Chi back to the field. And with the Shang-Chi, we can do a variety of different things. But in our particular case, we are just going to summon the Beatrice. And since we have two Shang-Chi's underneath, activate the effect. Detach one to send any monster or any card we want to the graveyard. Uh, which, for this particular board, I think the best one to do right now in our situation would be the Necro Banshee. But again, it really depends on what your hand is. Any one of these is a good target. If you already have Zombie World, you do not send Necro Banshee. Just send one of the other extenders that you have. And just keep comboing off. We've already played through the Nibiru, which is really cool. So yeah, send anything you want. Mizuki, Gozuki, uh, Balderock if you need to. Usually not Balderock because we haven't even used Glow Bloom yet. Uh, you can send Mad Maul. There's so many different options here. But in our particular case, we're going to send the Necro Banshee. Activate the Necro Banshee. And... Obviously, activate right there. We have Zombie World, Baron de Fleur, and the Beatrice uh, that can send a card to the graveyard essentially every turn, which is really, really cool. It can actually send during our opponent's turn, too. It has a once-per-turn quick effect detach when material send one card. So what we can do is we can turn Chaining onto Manual. We're going to go to the end phase. Our opponent's going to be in their draw phase. We're going to activate the effect of Beatrice in the draw phase. Detach in order to... Uh, we don't want to negate our own effect, but we can send, for example, a Glow Up Bloom right now, or we can just send a Doom King Baller Truck. We can, either one is perfectly fine. Uh, yeah, you can send either one, Doom King, or Glow Up Bloom. Either one will basically summon a copy of Doom King Baller Truck to our side of the field if we wanted to. We can also use the Glow Up Bloom, and then we can summon either Hela, uh, Doom King, Jacko Bulon. It's, it gives you, like I said, a variety of different plays that you can do. It can vampire fro line you can add to your hand and then you can block attacks for example so that's what we're going to do we're going to send the glow up bloom activate the effect of glow up bloom and then we have options to summon any of that if you don't want to lock yourself into zombies for the turn you can just directly send doom king baller drock and if you send doom king baller drock it'll just summon in the standby phase because right now we're in our opponent's draw phase so any of these are really just a decent option, to be 100% honest with you. Hella will summon zombie monsters from our graveyard. Summon them, This will banish or negate. Uh, this will summon a monster from our opponent's graveyard, and this can block an attack. So all of these are pretty good options. Obviously, we're going to special summon, and that's our end board. And standby phase, we can, if we already negated, for example, Nibiru, we can just summon something from our graveyard if the negate is basically dead. But in this particular case, we do still have the, the negate. Uh, but th that, again, is a combo courtesy of one of our subscribers. Thank you for the suggestion, and uh, you guys thank him if you happen to see him in the comments. All right, so next we've actually got a viewer-requested combo. Uh, one of the real problems with zombies is that they are very normal, some reliant. A lot of you actually brought that up in the last, uh, in the last video. And that is 100% true. A lot of the times, if your Unizombie gets ashed or Veilered or Impermed or something, sometimes you do just straight up lose because there's nothing left for you to do. Same thing with the uh, Solitaire. Sometimes Solitaire gets Impermed and you just, there's nothing you can do, you just lose. So one of the cool things that you can do is you can play the No Punk Engine, which actually plays around. Uh, the, actually, it doesn't really like play around uh, that kind of stuff, but it actually does assist you 
in making your deck significantly better because if you activate emergency teleport, it's a very fine chance that your opponent will just ash that instead of the Unizombie. Then you can just do your regular Unizombie plays and everything will be fine. On the other hand, uh, the emergency teleport, if it does go through, sets up basically a multiple interruption it sets up a mul it sets up multiple tuners and multiple non-tuners without committing anything to the board whatsoever and it doesn't matter that they're not zombies because zombie world will make all monsters into zombies regardless so it doesn't even like negatively affect you in any way so for this combo you just need emergency teleport and the unit zombie in addition to that you need a card to discard obviously in most situations you will want to discard something other than cross out designator but Obviously, for these videos I show, assuming you draw the worst possible situation, like Crossout Designator, for example, uh, I, I don't want to go plus off of the bonus, off the off of the uh, off of the discards because then the, the the discard isn't always guaranteed. So let me just I, I basically will leave that as like a blank. So for this, we will activate the emergency teleport in order to summon the admin from our deck. We are then going to activate the effect of admin to add a copy of a foxy a foxy tune to our hand any no punk monster we're going to add we're going to activate foxy tune to special summon a punk monster from our deck using itself and a card just discarding another card we will summon the deer note deer note is actually brand new it's actually a really good card because it's the leveling is really really fine for this card so we're going to going to summon the deer note uh, deer note is level five this is level three tuner so we actually have access to chaos ruler chaos ruler is very good in the deck because it lets you mill five cards and milling five cards is extremely strong in zombies because it, again you, there's so many graveyard effects once you fill that graveyard that duel is pretty much over because you will have grind game for the rest of like you'll have the grind game for the rest of the duel you'll have mizukis gozukis you'll have all that stuff ready to go in the graveyard shang chis when they get banished you have a variety of cards in your graveyard you will basically be playing all day long like they will not be able to beat you in the grind game so we're going to activate both effects chain link one you want to make the magical dragon because you do want to mill the five cards and then chain link two you make deer note to special summon from the graveyard uh, it's more likely that they have an ash blossom and they're saving the ash blossom so you want to uh, if they yeah they're saving the ash blossom so you might want to use the magical dragon as chain link one that way you make sure you resolve and then we're going to summon the foxy tune from the graveyard so we're going to summon the foxy tune right there and then we're going to mill five cards. Again, I've preset the deck uh, so that it mills like just spell cards that aren't going to help us. But in most situations, you will mill zombie cards that will obviously help you in all of these situations. Uh, zombies and trap cards that are that have graveyard effects, stuff like that, will obviously be a lot better than milling spell and trap cards. But I will show you this combo as if just you mill terribly. Uh, so then we're going to normal summon the Unizombie, activate Unizombie, targeting the Foxy Tune to make it one more level uh, to increase this level by one. And we are actually going to send the Banshee to the graveyard. We're then going to activate Banshee to put Zombie, uh, zombie World onto the field, which we can stop stressing about that because everything is now a zombie. Uh, we are then going to Link Summon, use Crystron, which is using the Chaos Ruler and the Unizombie to summon the Crystron. We're going to activate the effect of Crystron on summon. We can, again, depends on what your hand looks like, but in most situations, you will want to summon the Glow Up Bloom. If I had a card in my hand, I'd probably summon a Jet Synchron. If I had a Glow Up Bloom in my hand, then Jet Synchron would definitely be the card that I would take. But in this particular case, we're going to take the Glow Up Bloom. Now we are going to go into the Baron de Fleur using these two. Uh, now, remember that we actually increased the level of Foxy Tune by one using the Unizombie, which allowed us to do this. Uh, we are now going to activate the effect of Glow Up Bloom in the graveyard since it was sent to the graveyard to special summon from our deck. Again, the options really depend on what's in your hand in your on the field, but I like to fill my graveyard with a bunch of cards that I don't want to draw that will help me in the grind game. So I will summon the Shang-Chi from the graveyard right there. We'll then activate the effect of Shang-Chi. In order to send a monster, again, depends on what you milled from the Chaos Ruler, but in our particular case, we're going to summon the Mad Mauler. Uh, we're going to send the Mad Mauler to the graveyard, then going to activate the Mad Mauler, reduce the level of Shang-Chi by 2 to Special Summon itself. We are now locked into Zombies, so keep in mind that's something that we did. We're going to summon the Immortal Dragon here. 
and Immortal Dragon will allow us to mill an additional card um, to send an additional card to the graveyard. Again, the options are really up to you. Uh, this is our last mill card, so you, you have to be somewhat careful with what you mill here. Uh, again, you can, depending on if, if you have good cards in your hand, you send Gozuki. Mizuki will summon anything back. Uh, Doom King Baller Drock obviously is one of the best options in the deck. And then we've got a variety of other cards that can help the situation. Uh, you can even send like Spirit Master to the graveyard. And then if you banish Shang-Chi, you can actually banish this and then pop a card and summon a Shang-Chi. Like it's, it, it's like you have like double, double pluses um, in the deck. But in most cases, you want to send the Baller Drock. And don't forget, people. a lot of people forget that we are actually modifying the level of Immortal Dragon because he gains the his level becomes the difference between himself and whatever monster you send. So if you send, for example, Plague Spreader, this becomes level 4. If you send Mizuki, this becomes level 2. If you send Doom King, this becomes level 2. So it gain, its level becomes the difference. So we're going to send the Doom King Baller to the graveyard. Uh, now we're going to activate the effect of Chaos ruler the chaotic magical dragon in the graveyard we're going to activate that effect in order to let me see where it's at banish two monsters uh one of which is going to be the shang chi the other one is going to be the foxy tune so we're going to banish those two summon it to our side of the field activate the effect of shang chi to banish another monster it really doesn't matter which one you banish generally you don't want to banish these three right here so you just banish one of your no punk cards uh, you don't want to negate it with your own Baron de Fleur, no matter how much it asks you. So now we have even more options here. This is a tuner and actually is a level 2 since we sent Doom King to the graveyard using its effect. Uh, this is a level 6, so we can actually synchro into a level 8. Then we've got obviously a level 8 right here. Uh, in this case, we can go into uh, the Skeletal Dragon which is going to be obviously very useful. We can summon this, banish a monster, and we can just leave it on the field if we wanted to. We can obviously go into the Vampire Sucker if we wanted to, Vendred, all this great stuff, but you can summon Skeletal using this plus this, since we modified its levels, to summon Skeletal. On summon, we can banish a card. Uh, our opponent's controls are in their graveyard. Depending on what they're playing, that can be useful. Uh, next, we can actually go into a rank 8, which would be the va Zombie Vampire. Uh, this, you can use Skeletal Dragon and the Chaos Ruler. I'll summon this right here. And then what's good about uh, ha using... What's good about detaching from an XYZ material is that when we detach from an XYZ material, the Vampire, the this thing, the uh, Magical Dragon, will actually not be banished. It'll just be... In the, it'll go back to the graveyard because we used um, we detached it from an XYZ material, which is pretty cool. Uh, we'll basically get to use it next turn if we need to. But now that we have the vampire zombie vampire, we can activate its effects to detach this. It'll go to graveyard instead of getting banished, even though it left the field. And then we get to mill four more cards. We can summon a monster um, either from our graveyard or opponent's graveyard, which is really cool. But sometimes you got to watch out what deck you're playing against. Sometimes you can actually help your opponent if you're playing against Despia or Tri Brigade or something like that. You can actually end up helping your opponent. So you really want to know what they're playing before you use this effect. Sometimes it's better just to go into the... Sometimes it's better just to go into the, uh, what is it called? The Vampire Sucker here instead of anything like that. So we're just going to say no because we're going to assume that we got absolutely nothing out of it from our opponent or our own mill. Uh, so this is almost our end board here. We actually got to mill 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 cards from our deck. Obviously, in a real duel, these are going to be all types of different zombie monsters that you can do crazy different things with. And then on top of that, our graveyard is pretty stacked for the following turn. We have the Chaos Ruler, the Magical Dragon, which just summons itself back by banishing a light in the dark. Uh, you're probably saying there's no lights in the graveyard. That's actually completely false. Uh, well, it's partially true because this is actually a light monster. So if the vampire, if the zombie vampire goes to graveyard, this will go to graveyard and this thing is light. So we basically have the Chaos Ruler ready to go next turn. On top of that, we've got this guy, which when our, one of our zombies gets destroyed by battle, you can summon it back for free. This comes back during the standby phase and this thing... Uh, we can special summon anytime we have a level 6 uh, zombie monster on the field. So we have a ton of recursion in our graveyard all ready to go all set up. On top of that, we've got Baron de Fleur on the field and the zombie vampire on the field. And we've got the needle fiber here. So we're going to end our turn. We're going to stand by phase, activate the effect of Doom King to summon itself back. Uh, we have Baron de Fleur. We can summon from 
you know, summon that if we want to. Uh, during our opponent's main phase, we can activate Crystron in order to summon the Formula Synchron. Formula Synchron, we can activate to draw a card. Uh, we can also banish or negate or, yeah, we can banish using Doom King if we wanted to. And then we can draw. And then we can also, let's assume we use both effects of Doom King Baller Drock already. We can activate the effect of Formula Synchron in order to make Sherry Nui Sun Saga using these two. And Sherry Nui Sun Saga allows us to shuffle back zombies, zombie tuners from zombie synchros from our graveyard in order to pop cards our opponent controls equal to the amount of cards we shuffle back. So we can actually shuffle three different cards to pop three different cards non-targeting. So on top of already having Baron de Fleur that negates, we have a three non-targeting pops available to us. So this is even really, really good against back row decks. It's really good against uh, things like Flunderies where uh, they can just try to normal summon multiple birds and you can just pop all those birds so they have nothing to tribute it's very good against back row decks because they'll set their three back row and you just pop three cards non-targeting because it just destroys cards and we have three cards ready to go when these are back in the extra deck we just use them next turn if we really wanted to but this is really sharing new sun saga is really really good in this combo uh, but generally speaking i would just shuffle back the because our opponent in this tutorial only has one monster uh, we would just shuffle back the formula synchron and then we just pop a card our opponent controls. Uh, but yeah, that is a pretty pretty darn good board. Obviously, Doom King will come back during the standby phase. Uh, we could have also done this where we could have actually shuffled back. Instead of shuffling back Formula Synchro, we could have shuffled back one of our other uh, Synchros here. And then we could have just used the... Uh, Baron de Fleur to summon back the Formula Synchron and then make a new Baron de Fleur on our turn, which would have a live negate, uh, which is another really cool thing that you could do. But the No Punk Engine definitely lifts the ceiling of this deck quite a bit. It's just uh, the only thing is like how many zombies can you fit in there? And you definitely can't play any of the traps if you're playing the No Punk stuff because obviously there's just no space for it. It becomes like a pure combo deck. Uh, you definitely don't want to even touch any of the uh, the trap stuff. But yeah, this is this is the no punk stuff. It really does give you a lot of variety in the plays. Uh, the game is prompting me to summon something, so I'm just gonna summon the Unizombie. But yeah, you have a ton of different plays available to you. Uh, like I said, a lot of recursion in the graveyard. You've got a lot of different things on the field. Uh, you've got you can use again the effect of this, uh, the vampire, the zombie vampire, and then you can mill more stuff and summon another monster from your graveyard, your opponent's graveyard. Obviously, this time we can summon this. But yeah, it really lifts the ceiling of the deck. Give this combo definitely a try. Pops three cards, sets up a negate, sets up Doom King with two interruptions, and mills nine cards, all off of essentially two cards, and it puts Zombie World on the field. Uh, pretty crazy combo that it does there, and it draws actually too. I forgot with Formula Synchron. You go like, like how plus do you even go with this? I didn't even count. You gotta go at least like plus seven, plus eight off of just that one, just those two cards right there. Uh, but that is everything. These are all the combos that I have to bring you today. Uh, these are quite a few combos. If you have any combos to share, put them in the comment section below. If I make another combo video, you're obviously getting a shout out uh, because I always try to shout out the commenters that leave great suggestions. If you enjoy this video, definitely leave a like and have a great day.